Welcome back to the Friday Club Break Time with Interviews. This week, I'm talking with Sami Yosef, Admissions Designer Director at the Verso International School in Thailand. Sami, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really happy that you're here. Hey, Sophie. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. I know, Sami, that you have a very different approach to admissions and to teaching and learning at Verso. I think what would be really interesting in the first instance is if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and Verso International School. Sure. Uh, so, well, starting with myself, my name is Sammy. So hello to everybody watching and listening. Um, so uh, my, my background just within the international education sector started about a decade ago. Uh, I was working for ISC Research. So maybe some of the listeners know about ISC Research. They uh, gather data and intelligence on the K-12 international schools market. So I was with them for about five and a half years. Uh, and I've got to say it was a terrific platform to jump into this sector because um, I started off in the headquarters in, in Oxfordshire. And then shortly after that, after one year, I, I jumped into the field. So I worked in Southeast Asia and basically toured around 200 schools physically every single year. So meaning leadership of schools, stakeholders. It was um, yeah, very rich and rewarding experience. Uh, so after, yeah, after my time at ISC, then moved over to the behemoth that is North Anglia Education. I uh, was with them for a short while before moving into Verso. Um, so I joined the, the founding team uh, two and a half years ago to, to launch the school. And I've been there ever since. And it's, uh, yeah, so been an interesting career so far in international education. So challenges and you know wins and losses and so on it's been great and you've seen then two very different types of school there um when we've spoken previously i've been really intrigued as to the very different style of teaching and learning that you have at versa and how that filters down into everything else you do operationally at the school are you able to tell us a little bit more about the Verso approach to teaching and learning, Sammy? Sure. So I'll start off with the Verso origin story, where the Please, school yeah. all came from and, and how the concept all came about. Uh, so back in 2014, uh, that's when we have, we've had uh, two owners, so a joint venture at the school. So we have a Hong Kong side and the Thai side. Uh, from the, the Hong Kong side, um, our founding head of school came from uh, the Hong Kong Owners School, uh, that's American International School in Hong Kong. So that's where the, the origin of the education approach comes from. So Cameron Fox is a friend of the school. He, um, you know, he, he had gone through, you know, taking kids all the way through the American system for 20 odd years. And it was towards the end of his, his tenure there that he began to see, you know, that the, the pressure what that was doing to, to students and learners going through those traditional systems of you're heading towards that final standardized assessment and the amount of you know looking at their mental well-being you know the stress the anxiety they were leading to eating disorders you know and seeing his own two daughters go through that uh, he he had a, a moment of reflection and decided well is this really the future for our kids is this how we sh you know should be preparing them for their their life and their careers and so on is this really how school should be so it was a um, yeah that was a time for him to really think about uh, is this how we should be moving forward so then fast forward to when the owner of the school had made this joint venture with the the thai site the thai uh, the thai investor and they were going to open the school in bangkok so then he was given the opportunity to design this school for the future so that's when he decided to engage with the ido so Adio, leading a uh, firm in design and innovation based out of San Francisco. So Cameron went to the office in Singapore and gave them the question, a designer's dream, he said, help me design a school for the future. So straight away, all of the designers in Adio came around them. And then eventually that went up to the San Francisco office, the headquarters in, in San Francisco for Adio. Uh, so then they went on a big research task. So a big part of design thinking is your, your research phase, the discovery phase. Uh, so what they did, they visited 25 innovative and progressive schools in the US and also here in Asia. And just to see you know, the best practices, what were they doing differently compared to the traditional uh, school setting? 
Uh, on top of that, they also did a big uh, piece of work here in Bangkok. So we are built for Bangkok. I think that's the, the key essence about the school. Uh, so they met students, graduates, uh, also yeah, families, people working at international schools here in Bangkok, just to get an idea of, again, how, how was life at, at the schools? How did they, did they feel that what was working, what wasn't working? So again, a big research exercise to really understand the end user. So um, uh, I think that's, that's what we try to predicate the whole ethos about Verso is work based on human-centered design. Uh, so following that research exercise, then they helped us develop what we call our DNA. So we have like three purpose pillars, four mindsets and five key learning experiences. So that's just the framework. And then around that, we build all the educational models and, and everything on top of that. Um, so that was yeah, the work done back in what, 2017, then the construction of the school started. So we have a very innovative design as well that was all factored into um, you know, the, whole, the whole proposition about Verso. Uh, and then, yes, of course, the educational model was put in place. So then we fast forward again, 2019, we're doing our press conference launch, we're doing the, the whole uh, pre-opening and then COVID hit. <laughs> and, um, you know, opening school during the pandemic wasn't the easiest of things. Um, but again, it was one of those challenges. And as a startup, we're very lucky in that we, we could be agile and flexible. So we, we just pivoted to you know, be able to react to what was happening around us. So, uh, yeah, we embrace that startup mentality. And uh, as well, when, when you're in the working team, you've got to be ready to do jobs you weren't prepared to do. So, <laughs> so we're mm -hmm. embracing all different aspects of it. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of where Verso came from. Um, the name itself, actually not a big story about that. That was um, just somebody was reading a book and read that the underside of a leaf was called Verso, but actually in Latin, it's the right-hand page of a book. So it's a metaphor for we're turning the page in education. Like oh, okay, page. I've learned yeah. something there. Thank you. I didn't know yeah. that. No worries. Yeah. Really interesting. <laughs> it was literally just by chance. It wasn't deliberate or anything. Just somebody saw the word, thought it sounded good, and that's how a lot of th these things happen. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So the offer for parents is very different at Verso, isn't it? I know that there's a lot of project-based learning and could you tell us a bit more about this human-centered approach you've got? Because I know that that trickles down into your admissions process, but I think mm -hmm. for our listeners, if they could get a grasp of what this human-centered approach to learning is, that would sure. help paint a really good picture. Sure. Yeah. So again, it's, it's, I mean, a lot of schools are talking about we're pers personalizing the learning for students. Uh, what we're trying to do here as well is when we design the day, the school day for kids, we, we were very deliberate in not to do it subject by subject. So we're interdisciplinary, bringing more than, you know, at least three subjects together in any one lesson. Uh, and then we give time for our kids to work on their own projects. So we're 100% project based. Um, and then there's a time where kids work on their own projects. So they're able to dive into their passions, their interests, and really explore that area more in depth. Um, so of course, we've learned from year one, because we also continue to evolve. We're not just going to keep it the same as is every single year. We're evolving as we're going along. So that, you know, students are also accountable. So they're not just coming here doing whatever they want all day. Uh, we're making sure that they are, you know, meeting the learning progressions that we put in place um, and that, yeah, their parents can see that there is real progress being made, both academically and for the skills side of thing. But, but we, we really focus on the competency. So, so we follow competency-based model of education. So building the skills of, uh, of our students. I think we, we see that for the future, that's the real area that we need to focus on rather than rote learning and just, you know, memorizing things so you can write it down in the test. So we, we really focus in on the skills. Hmm. And that's why the, that's why I understand that your teaching staff are called designers. And you yourself, Sammy, you're the admissions designer at Verso because you're designing how all of this interdisciplinary subject matter will come together. Yes. How do you think that this human-centered approach changes the way that you tackle admissions for Verso? Yeah, um, so putting 
of course, so for us, we're dealing mostly with the parents. So we're putting them first. Um, I think as well, like in the context of, of Bangkok and in Thailand, this is, this is a very new proposition for them. Uh, they're very used to the, you know, the traditional constructs of school. You know, you're working towards a final examination and they're going to university. That's the traditional pathway everyone sees. Uh, but of course, we're we're looking at instead of making it a cone shape where everyone's working towards the same goal, we're trying to open up into a funnel where kids have a lot of different opportunities that they can go into, you know, different pathways that and options that they can go for. Uh, so a whole part of it is to understand where the parents are in the, in their understanding of this type of educational model. Uh, so we just ask a lot of questions at the very beginning. So if they get it, then that makes our conversation a lot, heck of a lot easier. But uh, for the majority, um, usually they won't be really familiar with this. So finding associations or, or different uh, other curricula that maybe have similar areas, because uh, like in the IB with the MYP, there's similarities there in terms of like I mentioned with the Explore. So we're able to use areas like that that we can associate and say, hey, well, we have parallels here with what they're doing in this program. We're just expanding it a little bit more. So we, um, yeah, a, a lot of it is just driving questions and we're, you know, constantly trying to get to know the family, get to know the kids, get to know the parents. Also knowing where the parents were at school is, is a big help for us because then that tells us, you know, if they were studying in the US, it'd be a little bit easier for them to understand. But if they're studying at Thai school, um, that's where we need to do a little bit more work in educating them. So in our whole free launch phase, we were doing workshops, you know, ed, you know, sessions to really help and educate them on, on this style of, of teaching and learning. Um, and yeah, we've had many different iterations in the way that we try to deliver the message. And uh, again, we're constantly evolving it and um, yeah, trying to get, yeah, find the right sweet spot is what we've been trying to do this whole time. Absolutely. It sounds like you guys are doing such a good job. I imagine that there'll be people listening to this, Sammy, who are thinking, OK, so you've got what some might call a non-traditional model there. It's quite different to the norm, um, both in Bangkok and other in, in other international schools. How have you found is the best way to educate parents on the model that you're proposing? Uh, I think, like I said there, it really depends on on the on the parent where they're coming from because some um yeah are quite passive and um you know that they, they'll just leave it to their child to make the decision like we've had the instances where it's the kid dragging the parents into the school we have a conversation and they're ready to to sign up others uh, it's not just one touch point it's several so they come in for a tour or they'll come in for one of our events they're coming for an open house they'll come in and see a student performance. So like it's many different touch points we need to do to really explain the educational model here. So yeah, varies, it really does vary. Um, but what helps us is uh, our systems that we have in place. So we've been very, trying to be innovative as well in the, the systems we're using. So we, back in oh, January, we brought in HubSpot. So we're using HubSpot both for the marketing side, admissions, and then our customer service, or service for our customers that we, we have at the end. Um, and having that plugged in with all three has just been fantastic. It's been, it's been revolutionary. So the whole lead generation campaigns we do with the marketing side of things, all that data that we can extract from that end using yeah, forums or landing pages, everything that we're doing on Facebook, and then plugging that into the CRM to which my team were working on with in admissions you know, we're, we're able to, we have so much information on the families already, you know, seeing which schools are at or, you know, which ads, what devices they're using and so on. So we're using all that data to help us as well in our storytelling and, and the way in which we approach each of the families. So we're, again, we have help, we're being supported by the tech that we have on the back end as well. And it really is about storytelling, isn't it? One of the things that I really liked about the exercises that you do with parents when they're finding out more about their site is this hopes and dreams exercise and I think that that will be really interesting to lots of people listening if you're able to tell us a bit more about what you do in that hopes and dreams activity with parents. Sure so uh, we love a play on words so we have what uh -huh. we call conversos so conversos is just a conversation um, and we'll do one 
with the kids when they're coming in and with the parents. So with the parents, that's where we, we do the hopes and dreams. So it's really just setting, seeing what their expectations are for sending the kids to the school. So we've got some question prompts, but much like this conversation is very, um, yeah, it's, it's nothing formal. It's more of an informal setting. And we're just looking to really, yeah, break down those barriers and, and get to know each other. Because uh, again, like we don't want to force people who don't want to be here. Because again, like our school won't be for every single family or for everybody. We just want to make sure this is the right fit because we're going to be going on a journey together. So we're just making sure that, yeah, you understand what we're trying to do. We understand what, what you're expecting from us. Uh, so then we just want to be comfortable that we're, we're, we're right for each other. <laughs> Sounds like a dating game, but yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of, that's, that, that's what we're trying to do in uh, doing that admission side of things is make sure the relationship is right. Because uh, we always talk about it's a three-way partnership, it's school, the kids, and the parents. And we're all working together here. Absolutely. And how, I know that you've, you will have had to, of course, you say that you've had to be quite flexible because when the school was founded, it was just before COVID hit. But how have you managed to maintain that verso ethos and keep educating parents as to what you're doing and keep that three-way conversation going? through the various school closures that we've faced in the last couple of years? Yeah, uh, it's, it's just down to communication. So a big part is we, we increase the accessibility to the learning designers. So whether that's through weekly Zoom calls or, you know, we've got Mr. Garrett, our uh, well-being instructor, he, he was doing um, high intensity training videos that the whole community could go on. So it's just, it's just, yeah, constant communication and, and staying in touch, staying, but not just updating them on what their kids are doing online. It's, you know, checking in with them, seeing how they're doing, you know, because it, it's uh, been a lot for the parents here because we were closed from April and then we're just now uh, open last week physically. So I think for, for a lot of the parents, it's a relief because, um, yeah, they're getting the kids out of, out of the house now. Um, I think as well from the kids themselves, it's just been, They've been locked up in, in the house. So they want to get out, they want to shake about and yeah, get moving again. So uh yeah, again, it's just staying connected, keeping that communication going and showing that you care. It's not just a transaction where, hey, are you okay? Yes, okay, thank you. It's it's we're having a yeah, again, informal, we're building relationships here, staying and being yeah, friendly with our families. Mm. So you've mentioned Sammy that this school was designed specifically for Bangkok. And I know that your founders undertook a lot of research, as you've mentioned today, in terms of designing the school in the right way. What is it about Bangkok in particular that you think makes this style of education, this style of schooling, the right fit for the city? Yeah, so to, uh, Bangkok and town itself, a lot of, there's a lot of creativity here. Um, you know, with the, the art that comes out of here, but then also you see the architecture as well, very creative place to be in. And not only that, there's a, a huge startup community. Uh, so we, we, we felt an affinity there between, you know, having a school like this and trying to be progressive and push things forward. And then also the, what, what was happening here in Bangkok as well. Um, so we saw parallels there and it was a nice fit. Um, but also see, when you see the design of, of our campus, there's a lot of feng shui in there and feng shui is a big deal here in uh, in thailand so uh, that comes from from our owners um uh, they believe in that so we uh, uh if you notice we have a lot of circular buildings all around and that's to you know to it is associated with lifelong learning it's continuous it never ends so that's that kind of that infinity and in, and in keep on going um but yeah back to what you're saying it's, about progressive learning model, whether this is the, the right for, for Bangkok. I think, again, going back to the research we're doing on, on the ground here, um, that's what we were finding is that the, from the families that we're interviewing, they said that, yeah, something had to, to change here. It was, uh, and another part was with the alumni from international schools, they, they felt disconnected from being, because they were Bangkokian, but they didn't feel like they're actually from here because it's kind of like they've been in a bubble. Yeah. So I think that was one thing is we, we like to connect with the local community. So building, um, so like, for example, our upper loop, we're connecting with uh, startups here based in Bangkok. 
and we've got and we're building a mentorship program internships will eventually be coming in as well so we have that business community small business community linked to the school uh, and that's part of our beyond the wall so we're we're going, eventually going to have our high school students going out and working at those companies or going to co-work spaces because um you know we shouldn't just combine kids to our campus even though it's a great space yeah let's get them into the real world i think that's um as a key part of our of our school as well is making it as, as real life as possible for for kids so they know that what they're getting themselves into once they finish school sounds wonderful mm -hmm. and really enjoyed talking to you today sammy one of the questions that we always like to finish on is what is your favorite part of schools marketing or schools admissions Whoa. That's, that's a big question. <laughs> yeah, that's a big question, yeah. I mean, the best part is meeting the people because, I mean, the characters that, that come in, like, um, yeah, it's uh, like in the two and a half years, like I look through the behavior here, I've got like 8,000 people that I seem to have met over these past couple of years. And I'm just like, yeah, it's been such a range. So, um, yeah, probably just, yeah meeting so many diverse people from all around the world has been such a rewarding experience. And, uh, and that's probably, yeah, for me, that's, that's the main takeaway. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Sammy. Um, I know that this will be really, really interesting for everybody who joins in and listens. And we hope that we can talk to you again on the Friday club. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me again. And uh, yeah, hope we can have another chat in the future.